Welcome to Chorus Stories. Are you ready to meditate with Cory? Hi friend, don't forget to subscribe, say that you like the video, and also press the bell so that you get notifications every time I make a new video. If you love Heidi, Cherry, and Vea, or Tucker and Leo stories, you can now get exclusive stories on my Patreon account. Go to the links below the video and you can join Heidi Cherry and Vea Club or the Tucker and Leo Club and get exclusive stories with your names in them. I love you all so much. Enjoy the story. Bye, friend. Are you ready? To meditate with Kari. Climb into your bed and make sure that everything is just right in your room so that you can relax your body and let go of your busy, busy day. Stephanie had just finished tidying her bedroom. It had been a few weeks since she tidied it, so it was a big job. She was feeling very accomplished, and her space was nice and clean. She'd even lit a candle so it smelt nice in her room. And after all the hard work of tidying and sorting and putting things away, she now felt just a little bit bored, like she didn't know what to do with herself. It's funny how that happens when you feel like you've got so many things that you need to do. And internally, they're going round and round in your head and you feel overwhelmed and pressured and stressed. But when you make the effort to do them, and it's done, and then you realize you have all of this space inside of yourself, and all of the clutter, and the voices, and the noise has been cleaned up. And then she didn't know what to do with herself. She tried reading a book for a while, but got restless and bored with that. And then she thought, maybe it's time to go to Moonbow Forest. She'll go and hang out there for a while with her friends. Yes, of course, that's what I'll do, she thought to herself. Stephanie walked over to her dressing table and sat down at the chair. She looked at herself in the mirror for a moment. She'd recently changed her hair, and she was trying to get used to it. But she was in that funny stage where every time she looked at herself, she was a little bit shocked at first. Like she wasn't sure that that was her. Someone else was staring back at her in the mirror. But then that moment quickly passed, and she felt like she was staring at herself once again. She took her very special magical earrings out of her jewelry box and put the left one on first. For a moment she just paused, curious to see if anything would happen if she just wore one earring instead of both of them. She closed her eyes so she could listen inside of her body more keenly. She felt a mild tingling sensation, but nothing too dramatic. It just felt like a low, buzzing vibration in her body. And that was about it. So she went ahead and put the other earring in her right ear closed her eyes, and waited for the magic to happen. 
The buzzing that she felt got stronger. She felt it in her toes and in her feet and it tingled and tickled and buzzed all the way up her legs, all the way up through her body quite quickly. Her nose itched and twitched. And then, there in her mind, using her inner sight, she could see the veil between this world and Moonbow Forest appear. It sparkled and twinkled, just like it always did. She lifted up her left hand and pulled the curtain to one side and stepped through, stepped into Moonbow Forest. To Stephanie's surprise, she didn't feel the grass underneath her feet. Instead, she got the overwhelming feeling of a falling sensation rush through her tummy up into her throat and she knew she was falling and she was falling fast. She opened her eyes, frantically looking around, her arms waving up over her head. She had on a skirt that was flying up, up past her waist. It kept throttling around in the breeze and smacking her in the face. She let out a scream without even realizing she was definitely falling. From what she could make out, everything around her looked the same. It was as if she was in some kind of tunnel going down. The tunnel walls were made of honeycomb. They were golden. And they looked kind of crispy. You know, like that honeycomb dessert that melts in your mouth. It smelt really strong, like vanilla and honey and caramel. She was falling so fast she could barely make this out, but she could see consistently that the walls of wherever she was falling were the same all the way around her. The falling wasn't stopping, and by now she was kind of curious on where she was falling to and how long she was going to be falling. She calmed down a bit. She lowered her arms and felt like she was getting a little bit more control over her body. And then from nowhere, it seemed like maybe 30 or 40 tiny, tiny little fairy-looking creatures all started to fall along with her. They weren't falling. They were flying. But they were falling fly falling at the same pace as her. One of the tiny little creatures got right in her face and Stephanie found herself going buzz-eyed a little bit to try and focus on what this thing was there in front of her. It wasn't a fairy. She'd met fairies there at Moonbow Forest before. This creature was different. It quickly introduced itself. Hello! It said with a really funny, cute little voice. Stephanie said, Hi! Trying to get her breath to talk. The cute little thing there in front of her said, I'm a Fenelf. My name's Sue. Stephanie said, I'm sorry. What did you say you were? Sue said, I'm a Fenelf. I'm half fairy, half elf. Fenelf. All the other Fenelfs that were flying at the same time, all were nodding in approval of, yes, yes, we're Fenelfs, we're Fenelfs. She heard a few, hi, 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 as if some of them were saying hello to her. Stephanie, still falling, said, oh, Hi, where are we going? Sue, the little Fenelf, said, Oh, um, it's been arranged. You're coming to help us this
this visit, we have a problem, you see. We have a big problem, and, and, and we need a big person's help. Stephanie said, Where am I, and where am I going? Sue, the little fun elf, said, Oh, you're in one of our funnels. This is a funnel. It's a fun hole slash tunnel. We call them funnels. You're in one of our funnels. Stephanie noticed just at the same time that her falling had slowed down. The speed that she was falling had slowed dramatically. She was just barely moving now. And then all of a sudden, she stopped and her feet touched the ground really gently. All the tiny little Fennelves that had been travelling with her all slowed down too. And then they were all just hovering in front of her at eyes height so that she could see them all. And now that she was actually still and solid on the ground, she noticed that they were very funny-looking things. They looked like a fairy. They were tiny like fairies. They had wings like fairies. But they were all wearing pointed hats, like a cone-shaped hat that had a point on the end. And their hats were quite big, which she noticed and thought that that was a little bit strange. And then they were dressed quite normally, just like, you know, fairy clothes. Some of them looked like they had fairy pants on and fairy little shirts. They weren't all dressed in like fairy dresses. But what was really unusual about these Fennelfs was that they had really big feet, like weirdly big, to the point where they didn't look quite normal. It looked out of shape or something. Like they didn't look like they fit on those particular little creatures. Two really big dangly feet. And then tiny little arms, tiny little wings, tiny little everything else, except these big pointed cone hats. Sue said, Okay, so let's make this clear. Hi, Stephanie. Pleased to meet you. We've been seeing you many, many, many visits, but you've never actually met any of us. We're fun elves, and we live in funnels. Fun. Holes. Funnels. And this is what we do. 24-7, we build fun holes. And that's why we have these hats and these feet. Just in case you're thinking... Our hats are pointed and we poke them into the wall. The honeycomb breaks open and we create a funnel. Now, sometimes we have to kick these walls because it takes a lot of moving sometimes in different parts as part of the honeycomb is harder in places than others. We've come into a problem. We're trying really, really hard to get to the breeze leaves. Now, let me explain, shall I, Stephanie? The breeze leaves are things that we use as Fennelfs to heal ourselves. Breeze leaves can only be found from certain trees here in Moonball Forest. And those trees are on the other side of that wall. We're stuck on this side of the wall. We need you, Stephanie, to get us over to the other side of the wall so that we can use the breeze leaves. We also like to call them wind whiners, but mostly we call them breeze leaves. But anyway, yes, yeah, so we noticed you're big. We noticed that you've got big feet. We noticed that your feet are bigger than our feet. And we noticed that that would be very helpful. So we had a little chat with all the unicorns and they said that you're nice and you'd probably help us. Stephanie, today, for you, we have a proposal. Would you be inclined to possibly kick a hole through that wall right there over there? Because that part of the honeycomb is the hardest part that we've ever, ever bumped into. It's probably the hardest part on all of Moonbow Forest. And that's saying something because we have these funnels at 
absolutely everywhere underneath the ground. They're all over the place and they lead to different things. And, unfortunately, we've found ourselves in a predicament. A lot of us Fenelfs need a little bit of healing. We need the breeze leaves. Because the breeze leaves, they, they, they basically like have different sounds that come from the wind. The breeze, right? And those sounds have healing properties. The different sounds from the breeze on the wind or the wind whiners, whichever you'd like to prefer to call them, those sounds have a particular vibration and that vibration matches with our parts of our different elf and fairy bodies. And when we hear it, it helps us to heal. It's basically sound healing, but we don't get it from anything other than the breeze leaves. So we need your help to go through that wall. The first thing that Stephanie thought was, by golly, this little thing can talk. The second thing was, oh, that would be pretty easy. I'm sure I can break through that honeycomb wall. She expressed this to Sue, the little Fenelf. And all of them cheered very happily, clapping their hands together. And then they did this really cute thing where they clicked their feet, their big giant feet. They clicked them together as if they were jumping up in the air and kicking them and clopping them together at the same time. Stephanie thought that was absolutely adorable. She walked over to the part of the honeycomb tunnel that they wanted her to kick. She pushed it with her hand. Nothing changed at all and she noticed that it was quite sturdy. She decided to lay on the ground, lay on her back, and get some good, good energy behind it. She pulled her knees all the way up to her chest and then kicked out like a bunny rabbit kick, both feet at the same time. She felt the wall move, but it didn't break open. She did it again and again. By now, all the little Fenelfs had started going heave, heave, heave in time with each one of her kicks. This made her feel very, very energised and it kept her pace going. Kick after kick after kick. Heave, heave, heave. The honeycomb wall, the part of the tunnel, was definitely moving. She kept going and going and kicking and kicking. Heave, heave, heave. The little Fenelfs kept saying over and over again. Until eventually, she felt her feet break all the way through the honeycomb wall. There was a big, big cheer. And the Fenelfs all flew in different directions as if a firework was going off. Stephanie climbed onto her knees and crawled and shoved her head through the hole that she created. What she saw on the other side was breathtaking. It was all blues and greens. It was the most beautiful blue sky that she'd ever, ever seen. And somehow, in a strange way, and she didn't know how, but it looked different from the normal Moonbow Forest sky. It was richer. It was more intense. Like the particles of colour that were there were stronger or something. And there were so many really pretty looking trees. And there was a wind blowing. And there were leaves flying around creating shapes like swoons of birds flying through the sky. They must be the breeze leaves, she thought to herself. They were making swirls and corkscrew shapes and, and all different shapes in the sky. Literally like birds when they fly together and then they change direction all at the same time. It was so pretty to watch. 
She could have kept watching for a long time, but she felt something tugging on the back of her neck. Something tiny had got a hold of a clump of her hair, and it was pulling and tugging. She pulled her head out of the hole and looked back. Sue, the little Fenelf, said, Thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. But it's probably time that you get back to your unicorn friends because we've got work to do. Before she knew it, she felt like she was being pulled backwards by a lot of tiny little things, grabbing hold of her clothes, grabbing hold of her skirt, pulling her backwards away from the hole, until she was back in the opening. And then all of a sudden, she started to just be transported up, 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 up. She was travelling back up through the honeycomb funnel, travelling all the way back to the top. She was alone this time. All the little Fenelfs had stayed down there. They'd got work to do. They were about to fly out there and collect the breeze leaves. Her journey back up the Fenel was taking its time. But it was so much more nice and relaxing now that she knew she wasn't falling to her death or something. Going up the tunnel was actually quite pretty. She got to take her time and stare at the different textures and colours in the honeycomb, the golds and the browns, the orange shades that all kind of mingled into each other. And the smell was truly delicious. She reached out at one point and grabbed what looked like a chunk that was hanging off the side of the wall and popped it in her mouth. It was definitely mouth-meltering delicious, just as she suspected. She got all the way up to the top and then seemed to just magically pop out of the ground. She felt her bare feet on the grass. And she took a big deep breath in and smelt the normal smells that she smelt when she passed through the curtain. Stephanie took a moment to feel the earth underneath her feet and get grounded once again. She took a big deep breath and closed her eyes for a second, grateful that she was there. And then when she opened her eyes, she peered forward into the trees and noticed Luna and the other unicorns over there. She started to walk forward towards them, walking into another journey, another adventure. Not that she hadn't just had an adventure. My goodness, that was definitely an interesting adventure, she thought to herself. The End